So the first question is uh, June 2013, question 1A. And the question reads as follows. Bartisha Limited currently manufactures a single product branded Z. Due to stiff competition in the industry, the company plans to launch additional products in the market. The production director has identified three products which are mutually exclusive, namely A, B, and C. The production director believes that demand for the product would vary depending on the competitor reaction as follows. So we have the strong, we have the normal, we have the weak. And additional information is that the net present value for each of the possible outcomes is as follows. Uh, Perfecto Limited, a market research company, believes that it could provide information on potential competitor reaction in this market. The company will use the expected value approach to make the decision. Now, advise the management on the maximum amount that should be paid for the information from Perfecto Limited. So we are dealing with the question of June 2013. June 2013. Question 1A. And it's coming from a position theory. Position theory. And what we have here is payoff stable. We have the payoff table. So on this side here, I have uh, product A, product B, and product C. And then we have probability here. Then the outcomes are strong, normal, and weak. And then we will have EMV there. So the figures are for A, 360 when it is strong, 540 when it is normal, and 900 when it is weak. B is 720, 1080 for normal, and 720, no, 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 not 
We are dealing with B, B7, 8, 10, 8, and 14, 14. C, strong is 10, 8, normal is 7, 20, weak is 900. The probabilities are Probabilities for strong are 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and 0 0.5. Those are the probabilities. When you finish drawing, you say finished. Yeah, I can see we have finished. Okay, so if we are finished drawing, uh, the first rule that I want to remind us is called the most likely event rule. Most likely event rule. Now, most likely event rule it requires that you be knowing, rather it requires that the names of options and outcomes be similar. So here it is not applicable, not applicable in this case, in this case, since names of options and outcomes and outcomes are not similar. So that rule cannot be used in this question because the names of the options and the names of the outcomes are not similar. That's the reason why we shall not use it. It's the reason why we shall not use it. But if the names were similar, what we have done is to get this highest probability, you get to know the name of that outcome, and then you come and find it here. And when you find it here, you take that as the decision. You take that as the decision. You take that as the decision. So I hope we are okay with that. The next rule, the next rule is called expected monetary value rule.
The next rule is called expected monetary value rule. And in this expected monetary value rule, we begin with the option here. And then we compute the expected the expected monetary value, the expected monetary value, the expected monetary value. So when you start with A, you will say 360 times 0 0.3 plus 540 times 0 0.2 plus 900 times 0 0.5. So compute that and quickly give me the answer. Yes, I have one response. I have two of them. I need at least five for your mini. I have three answers. Okay, that is uh, 666. Six, six. Make sure you save your figures. Uh, we go to B and do the same thing 720 times 0 0.3 plus 1080 times 0 0.2 plus 1440 times 0 0.5. Uh huh. Good. I can see one response. Two, three. I need many responses so that we move at the same speed. Yeah, eleven fifty-two. Then we go to C, we do the same thing, 1080 times 0 0.3 plus 720 times 0 0.2 plus 900 times 0 0.5. Uh -huh, set the figure, I have the first one. Uh -huh, another one, and they are different. Another one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Said several figures. Yeah, I think the one that is appearing popular is nine eighteen. Nine eighteen. Okay. So good. I can see that. Right. So now you go for the highest. When you are using this rule. We go for the height. So the height is this one. So the advice that you read that today's guys, the advice that you give them is that they should launch. They should launch product B. They should launch product B. That is the advice that we shall give them. They should launch product B. Rough now, you come and record those values here. 666, 6, 6, 11, 52, and 918. You record them there. Right. The next thing. Is called uh, max max rule. So 
So max max rule. Here we begin with the option, and then we extract the maximum payoff. We extract the maximum payoff. We extract the maximum payoff. Uh, we got A. Uh, tell me the maximum payoff in A. The maximum payoff in A. Yeah, good. I can see 900. Uh, let us go to B. Tell me the maximum payoff in B. The maximum payoff in B is uh, 1440. We go to C. Yeah, good. The maximum payoff in C is. Yeah, I can see the figures coming very fast. 1080. So according to this rule, you should select the maximum of the maximums. Select the maximum of the maximums. So the maximum of the maximums is this one. And therefore, we will advise them, we will advise them to run to product B. We will advise them to run to product B. We'll advise them to run to product B. Uh, the next rule that we need to remind ourselves about is called maximum rule. Maximum rule. And here we need the option. Then we extract the minimum payoff. We extract the minimum payoff. The minimum payoff. So, uh, option A, the minimum payoff for A is what? Yeah, good, 360. We go to option B. The minimum payoff for B is 720. Good. We go to C. The minimum payoff for C is 720. Is 720. So we now come down here and offer them the advice. We offer them advice. So the advice is you should go for the maximum of the minimums. The maximum of the minimums. And because there are two that happen to be equal, we will then advise them to launch either, round either B or C. They will round either B or C. That's an indifference point. Uh, next is uh, called Rapid's Rule. We have Rapid's Rule. Now Rapid's Rule, we have option here. Then we compute something called simple average payoff. Simple average payoff. Simple average payoff. So this one, what you do, 
you take the payoffs 360 plus 540 plus 900 all these you divide by three because there are three of them you divide by three uh -huh. I have one answer Send your answers, two of them now. Three, good, good, good. So it is 600. Let us go to B, do the same thing. 720 plus 1080 plus 1440. You divide all this by three. You divide all this by three. Oh, the answers are coming very fast. 10, 8, 10. Ah, yeah. Then C, you do the same thing. 10, 8, 10 plus 720 plus 900. You divide by three. You divide by three. Get the answer. So the answer in Akuja POP 900. 900. And therefore, the advice we also go for the highest year. So the advice is they should launch because we are going for this one. They should launch. They should launch product B. And it is only a coincidence that the, the rules appear to suggest one product. So don't take that everywhere all the rules will be giving you the same direction. No, it's only a coincidence in this question that it appears all the rules so far used, they are suggesting B. Yeah. So different rules quite often give different results. We are beginning now. The next one that we need to remind ourselves, and I to a how it's rule. I to a how it's rule. How it's rule. So this one, we will have to say red alpha to be 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So when we say red, that means we are assuming. It means we are assuming it was not provided in the question. So here we will take the option. Then we normally take alpha times the best payoff, best payoff plus one minus alpha, one minus alpha times worst payoff, worst payoff. And this gives us something we call weighted average payoff. Weighted average payoff. We get something known as weighted average payoff. Weighted average payoff. Weighted average payoff. But if the examiner wanted you to use this method, they would provide uh, the alpha. They would provide. So for A, it will be 0 0.7 times. The best in A is 900. Plus one minus alpha would be 0 0.3 times the worst there. The worst there is 360. The worst is 360. Yeah. 
Yeah, 738 coming very fast. 738, good. Uh, let us go to the next part B. 0 0.7 times. The best there is 1440 plus 0 0.3 times the worst there is 720. The worst is 720. So I can see the answers. Yeah, they are coming, they are coming 1224. Ah, yeah. Then we go to C, whereby we say 0 0.7 times, uh, the best there is 1080 plus 0 0.3 times, the worst, the worst there is uh, 720, the worst is 720, uh -huh. the answers are coming also very fast, 972, that's very good. 972. So once again, we go for the highest there. We go for the highest. So we will advise them to run product B. Because we are taking the highest, we will advise them to run product B. We will advise them. Round product B. Product B. Ah, the next rule The next rule is called the The next rule, Naitoa Savage. Some people call it regret rule. Regret rule. And this one requires you prepare the opportunity losses table. The opportunity losses table. Opportunity or system. So for the options here, we have A, B, C, and probability. Probability there. Then for the outcomes, let's start with the strong. Let's start with the strong. So what you do, you come here to the strong and you identify the highest. The highest at a strong Milani, the highest payoff for strong is 10, 8, good. So you take this 10, 8 here, 10, 8, you subtract all the others. So you subtract 360, you subtract 720, and you subtract 10, 8. 
So give me this. 10 eta minus 360 is what? Seven twenty. Ah, yeah. Then eight minus uh, seven twenty is three sixty. And this one is obviously zero, and the probability is zero point three. So here to Nafunga. Here to Nafunga, we go to normal. No more, we do the same thing. So here I was to take a ten eight minus five forty, which should be five forty. Then ten eight minus ten eight that should be zero. And then ten eight minus seven twenty that should be three sixty. And the probability is zero point two. So I hope you got those values. Let us go to the next. Let us go to the next. The next is a uh, week. Week, the highest is 1440. You minus 900, 1440 minus 900, what do you have? By 40, then 1440 minus uh, 1440, that is zero. Then 1440 minus Oh, it's in a banana. 900 is 540, and the probability is 0 0.5. The probability is 0 0.5. Then now we will compute something called expected opportunity loss. Expected opportunity loss. Expected opportunity loss. And expected opportunity loss, you compute just like the EFP. So we shall not write, so to work accurate and do this, to work accurate and do this, 720 times 0 0.3 plus 540 times 0 0.2 plus 540 times 0 0.5 equals. Give me the answer. Uh -huh, I have one answer. Yeah, they are coming, 594, good. So, Then let's go to the next one. You take 360 times 0 0.3 plus 0 times 0 0.2 plus 0 times 0 0.5. I have one answer that has come, good, good, another one. Yeah, good. I can see one weight coming. One weight coming. Uh, let's take the next one. Zero times 0 0.3 plus 360 times 0 0.2 plus 540 times 0 0.5. Uh, to my Jibu, 342 coming very fast. So the advice is you take 
The advice is that we go for the lowest. So the lowest is that we should run to product B. We should run to product B. That's the lowest. That's the lowest. And when you are there, this lowest here, this lowest is also the value of information. That lowest is the value of information. Is the value of information. The value of information. So if you already have done the table and they're asking you for the value of information, I'm saying the OS EOL is the value of information. But if you have not done the EOL, uh, the formula for the value of information or the computation of value of information, this is how you go about it. You come to the original table here, you take the highest. So the highest is 10, 8 here, multiplied by 0 0.3, that is the probability. Plus, you come here to a normal, you take the highest, which is 10, 8, multiplied by 0 0.2. Plus, you go here to the weak, take the highest, 1440, multiplied by 0 0.5. Multiplied by 0 0.5. Then you take the highest EMP. The highest EMP here is 1158, uh, 1152. And when you do that, can you confirm whether the answer is 108? Confirm whether the answer is 108. Yeah, good. It is confirmed that it is 108. So I wanted you now to remember how we deal with the single stage divisions and the rules that we use. So make sure you refresh on that. You refresh on that. Let us now go to, are you okay now so that I go to question next? We are okay, same yes, so that I move to the next question. Yeah, good, good, good. I can see the yeses coming. So the next question, the next question, June 2005, question one says, Tony Kichumi, a financial analyst at Green City Bus Company Limited, is examining the behavior of the company's monthly transportation costs for budgeting purposes. The transportation costs are a sum of two types of uh, costs. Uh, we have operating costs such as fuel and labor, maintenance costs such as overhaul of engines and spraying, Kichumi collects monthly data on items one and two above and distance covered by the buses. Monthly observations for the year ended that 1st of December 2004 were as follows. So we have all that. Then Kichumi ran three linear regression equations based on the data above and came up with the following results. So we are given that. And now we are told to do those tests. We are told to do those tests.
So this question of uh, June 2005, question one is on what we call regression and correlation theory, correlation theory. And specifically, what we are taught to do is what we call reliability tests. Reliability tests. That is what we are taught to do. So we shall have a column here called details. And another one here, equation one, Equation one, equation two, and equation three. So design something like that. If I get to it to share the entire page. I believe now we are finished. So when you are dealing with these reliability tests, there are some background data that you need to get. One, 
is to come up with the, is to identify who is the dependent variable. Dependent variable. So dependent variable in equation one is operating costs. Operating costs. In equation two, it is maintenance costs. Maintenance costs. Uh, in this other one is total transport costs. Total transport costs. Those are the dependent variables, the values of rather the wise. The next thing that you need to identify is the independent variable. Independent variable X. In equation one, it is distance as you can see there. It is distance. Equation two, it is also distance covered. Distance covered, I think I need to be complete, not just distance, but distance covered. And also in equation three, it is distance covered. Distance covered. Distance covered. The next thing is uh, format, general format, general format, general format. When you have one independent variable, the general format we know is y is equals to a plus bx. The same case here, y is equals to a plus bx. And the same case here, y is equals to a plus bx. That is the general format. The fourth thing is the equation. is the equation as obtained. Now this one will be y is equals to, as you can see, 309.19 plus 0.054x. We can use x, although the examiner there is using d, uh, William Mingine is y is equals to five that one point five five minus zero point zero three one x. Now William Mingine, as you can see, it is eight forty point seven three plus 0.023x. So with that data now, with that data in mind, if with that data in mind, we can now comfortably do our liability tests. If you remember how we did it in class, this is what we are calling the illustration sheet. It is the column ya x, na column ya y. Arafu sasa tukatafuta those are the values. Finally, tukapata the results. So we want to do the test now. We want to do the test. So the first test, the first test that we are told to do is called economic plausibility. Economic plausibility test. Economic 
prosperity test. Economic prosperity test. Economic prosperity test. Remember, there are three types of relationships. The first one is called direct, whereby the variables change towards the same direction and is normally represented by positive sign. The second one is called inverse. And this is where the variables change towards opposite directions and is represented by a negative value for the slope. The third one is called null relationship. Null is where a change in one variable has no effect on the other one and is represented by a zero value. So economic prosperity simply checks whether the expected relationship is in agreement with the observed relationship. So we are going to design it like this. The first item is a bigger expected relationship. Expected relationship. And now tell me, in general, in general, what kind of a relationship would you expect to see between operating cost and distance covered? Would you expect an inverse relationship, a direct relationship, or a zero relationship? What would you expect? Yeah, good, good. Direct. So I think a direct. I a direct apple. Tell me the same for maintenance and distance. What kind of a relationship would you expect to see? What kind of a relationship would you expect to see? Uh, what kind of a relationship? There is no relationship called indirect. Uh -huh. <laughs> so for those who are saying inverse, are you telling me, yeah, now I can see the correction. Are you telling me you would expect that as the vehicle covers more kilometers, the maintenance cost decreases. <laughs> and those who are saying direct, are you saying <laughs> that as you cover more kilometers, the maintenance cost goes up? Those who are saying now, are you saying there is no relationship at all? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can see even the evidence support. The relationship is direct. As you do more kilometers, the maintenance cost goes up. As Anne is saying, we are 10 feet. All right, let's go to transport. So those who are saying inverse and null are being direct. I hope you have gotten that. Uh, total transport. What kind of a relationship would you expect between total transport and distance? What would you expect, direct or inverse or not? Yeah, I can see direct coming. Good. That's what you would expect. After you have what you expect in mind, then you check the observed you go and check the observed relationship. The observed relationship is what now we have seen here. 
So this one is which direct or uh, which relationship? Which relationship have we seen here now? This one. We have seen direct. That is positive 0 0.054. And this one, what have we seen? It is inverse. That is minus 0 0.31. And this one, we have seen direct. That is 0 0.023 positive. That is what we have observed. So what do you comment as the conclusion? Are these two plausible? The relationship is plausible, or it is making sense if what you expected is what you found that relationship is plausible. So in question one, is it plausible? Yes, so this one is uh, economically plausible. Uh, this one, is it plausible? The second one, is it plausible? No, so it is what we call spurious, nonsensical, it's not making sense. You cannot have a negative. And this one is plausible. That is plausible. That is for the economic plausibility. That is economic plausibility. Uh, let's proceed to the next one. So for me, I will wrap here because my table or my space is not expandable down there. But you have to mind the apple. The next one that we are supposed to do is called goodness of fit. Goodness of fit tests. Goodness of faith tests. Goodness of faith. Now, goodness of faith, there are six tests. There are six tests. So the first one is R square. The first one is R square. So look at equation one and tell me R square is what? Equation one, R square is what? Yeah, 61. So you can call it uh, 0 0.61. Equation two, we have uh, 0 0.68. And equation uh, three, we have 0 0.29. So in regard to R square, I told you, the higher the value, the better. The higher the value, the better. And I told you, if a relationship has R square below 60%, below 60%, we should reject. So this one, we can simply say accept. You have to accompany all those people of bad day because the best place you can accept me to are 80%. But as long as you may figure 60, you will go out. So this one, we can also accept. We can also accept. But this one, we need to reject. We need to reject. So that is the first goodness of faith test. So you can either make the comment that way, that way, or you can tell us this is the highest, this is the medium, and this is the lowest. You can also say something like that. Uh, the next test is R. So can you see R in the equation? 
rather in the results. Is it provided? Yes or no? Ah, uh, can you see it? I need a yes or no answer and you are saying we can calculate. <laughs> June, you are giving me the formula. My question required a yes or no and the answer is no, it is not provided. So if it is not provided, you should not compute, Anne and June, you should not compute. When you are given a report, to interpret, a report, you are only supposed to interpret. You are not supposed to tamper. If you compute, they will accuse you of doctoring the results. If you compute, you'll be accused of doctoring the results. Not unless the author of the report has given you permission to compute. So if they have not given you the value, it means they did not want your views about that. It means they did not want your views about that. So he, we will not say about anything about it. But if it was there, you know it measures, first of all, is just getting the square root of these ones. Just getting the square roots, we get the values of R, and then we judge. And remember R shows how strong the relationship is. But because it is not there, we are not going to comment about it. So you're to Naja. The next thing is uh, F tests. F tests. When you look at those results, can you see F anywhere? Yes or no? Can you see F tests? Yes or no? Yeah, so it is also not provided. So if it is not provided, you don't compute. But kama wangekua mekupea values for F, you would have commented. Remember, F shows the significance of the relationship. The next one is uh, FB, sorry, SE, standard error of estimate. Standard error of estimate, is it provided? Is it provided? Are we given the standard error of estimate? Uh -huh. Is it given? Okay, I can see many of you saying uh, standard error, <laughs> but it is not provided. You see, when I wrote distance here, I was quick to say, let me complete. I said distance covered. Because the word distance can represent so many things. Sasa nyinyi munasema yes. Najua munasema yes sababu munaona the word standard error. But I'm not just talking of standard error. I'm talking of standard error of estimate. <laughs> so here munaita standard error of estimate. It is the standard error of the slope, SB. Those are the errors of the slopes, SB. So SE is not provided. All those who have said yes. Hakuna SE. Ireiko ni SB. Okay, so Adika SB, what I'm saying. Uh, for the first equation, it is 0 0.014. Equation 2, 0 0.007. Equation 3 is. 0.011. Those are standard error of the strokes, not for the estimate. So I hope you have gotten that, those who are saying yes. So SE is not provided. Now, coming to these which have been provided, uh, I told you, uh, the smaller the error, the better the relationship. The smaller the better, the, oh, oh. the smaller the error. The smaller the error, the better the relationship. So here, we can uh, maybe put it this way. 
This is the highest. It's the highest. This is the lowest. This is the lowest. And this one we can say is the media. We can say is media. Okay. Aya, too. Now in the exam, you don't keep on writing these ones, eh? These ones that are not there. You don't write them. Me, I'm only writing so that I remind you that you need to go and read what they are. Uh, what they are. Number six now. Uh, someone to tell me here in the back in the nani as I clear the whiteboard. I said there are six of them. I've already mentioned five. When you're back here, let me see. Yeah, good. I can see Amanda, I can see Churchill, I can see Anne, I can see June. Good. It is T test. Good. So T test, you're in your back. So in T tests, uh, T tests, there are three things that you require, or two things, and then you make the conclusion. The first one is T calculated, which is given as B out of SB. B out of SB. Now this one we are going to calculate because okay, kwa the requirements. Eh? We have been given permission to do that. Where the last item qua brackets in the same are use a 95% confidence level where applicable. So happen in a applied. So that is the permission to compute. So for equation one, you will say 0 0.054 divided by 0 0.014. Give me this answer to two decimals. Give me the answer to two decimals. Give me the answer to two decimals. Yeah, 3.86, good, good, good. And if you are keen enough, you can even see what I had said. You are not supposed to compute these things. That 3.86, when I own our commission, it is there. It's already given. But for the purposes of uh, reminding ourselves, so the same thing with the same half a minus 0 0.031, when it is divided by 0 0.007, the answer should be minus 4.43. And then we will give 0.023. When you divide by 0.011, the answer is 2.09. The answer is 2.09. Two point zero nine. Aya. From there, you require plus or minus t critical. One minus zero point zero five out of two. The degrees of freedom are twelve minus one. Twelve minus one. The values are twelve of them. The values are twelve. So go to the T-tables, Go to the T-tables and uh, read for me this value. T0.975 for a column and 11 in the row. Give me that answer. Yeah, 2.2, uh -huh. one person has sent. I need several others to confirm.
Yeah, another person has sent. Uh-huh, the others. Okay, let me go by the value sent by Amanda and June. So I think I think plus or minus 2.20. Plus or minus 2.20. Plus or minus 2.20. Then after that, you need to make the conclusion. You need to make the conclusion. You tell us whether it is significant or insignificant. You tell us whether it is significant or insignificant. And because it is many years since we covered this thing, let me remind some of us. Let me remind some of us. If you are on this side, if you are on this side, we say it is significant. If you are on the lower side of minus 2.2. If you are here inside, we say it is insignificant. And remember, this is positive 2.20. Ukiwa huku, it is significant. Get up some your notes on T-text. On the lower side, where we were saying reject, the same thing as saying significant. Ukiwa in between, insignificant. Ukiwa huku inje, on the positive, it is significant. So now tell me, when you, uh, you take this 3.84, we have a here. Are we going to say it is significant or insignificant? Uh -huh, June says significant. Some more opinions. A change significant, a matter. If I read significant, Churchill, good. So he is significant. Signific significant. Tell me whether it is significant, E minus 4.43. Uh, June says it is insignificant. Churchill says it is significant. Uh, I need three more answers to write. Those are two people who have responded. Ibarim says it's insignificant. I need two more people so that I proceed. This I should be going with five persons. Uh -huh. Amanda says insignificant. Uh -huh. One more opinion so that I also give my opinion. Anne says insignificant. Rhoda, insignificant. Jack, in. Oh, Jote kwa significant. Umeanguka hiyo. It is significant. I think ni watu wa wili tuwa me. I even tuwa na advice. It is insignificant. E minus four, ikona uku chini. Ikona uku. So this one is very significant. Minus four, ikona uku. <laughs> Those who are saying it's significant. Are you okay now? It is significant. Ikona the lower side. Yeah, good, good. Aya. Now he gives an aisle. E two point zero nine. Is it significant or insignificant? Yes, Amanda, Churchill. Uh huh. I need more responses. Those are two. Yes, Jack. Ibarin, Roda, yeah, good. 
face is insignificant. It is inside. It is insignificant. Insignificant. Okay. So you have to memorize goodness of it. And I need to proceed now to the next one. So the next one, the examiner is calling it uh, specifications. Specifications, analysis criteria. Analysis criteria. Specifications, analysis criteria. Now that so-called specifications analysis criteria, it is what in our notes I taught you to be, or I told you is called assumptions, assumptions. So I told you we have six assumptions. Number one is linearity. Number one, linearity. The first assumption is linearity. Linearity, uh, it is tested in three ways or in two ways. Let me just confine myself to two ways. The first way is why you draw the graph. Now, this examiner has not given us a graph, so we cannot comment. The second way is whether, where you develop the equation and you, are, you, you check whether it agrees with the general format. So here equation, you check whether it agrees with this one. Do they agree? Are they of the same form? Yes. So if yes, then you say this is linear. This is linear. And even this one is linear. Those three equations that we have gotten, they comply with the general format. It's as simple as that. The second assumption I told you is zero mean of the error terms. Zero mean. Now the question does not have the error terms. So we cannot comment about that. The third assumption is what I call constant variance. Constant variance of the error terms. Constant variance of the error terms. Again, we don't have the error terms, so you cannot comment about that. Uh, number four is what we call the normality. Is what we call the normality. And because we do not have the error terms, again, we have nothing to do with that. Uh, number five. Number five is what we call collinearity. Collinearity, it is used where we have more than one independent variables, where we have more than one independent variables. And you can see here, we already have one. So we have nothing to say about that. And the last one is uh, autocorrelation. Autocorrelation. So I'm just summarizing. Hoping after this you will get to your notes and check on those things in details. Autocorrelation. Now, autocorrelation, it is uh, tested using two things, uh, using what we call Durban Watson statistic. So, Sasaka, you get Durban Watson statistic calculated. Durban Watson statistic. Calculated. Ukiagalia equation one, the Durban Watson is 1.61. Kwa equation two, it is 1.72. Equation three, it is 
Those are the Durban Watson statistic values that you have been given. Then I told you, if the calculated DWS is between zero and four, it means there is no autocorrelation. So what is the conclusion or the comment? No autocorrelation. So he namanisha no autocorrelation. Ata hui mwigine ukimuona hivo, anamanisha no autocorrelation. Ata hui mwigine no autocorrelation. Because all of them are between zero and four. All of them are between zero and four. So, Sasa, here table in the summarize the available text. So, come up on a mile in my own Alisa. Make sure you go after this to your notes. And, uh, the Pata Mwangaza Hapo. So, are we okay to proceed to the next question? If you are okay, Sema, proceed. If you are okay, Sema, proceed. If you have any query, you raise it. Yes, if Arin says I should proceed, can you say, June? Royce? Jack? Amisi? Good, now quickly read the next question on your own. We can read the next question. We can read that question on your own. Read that question on your own. Question is December 2004. This is the paper I sat for those days. December 2004. Question uh, one. And this one is on uh, forecasting methods. Forecasting methods. And because this question, I think if I did not solve it in class, I gave you as an assignment, one of those two. Uh, let's move and move at a higher speed because we are just using it to remind ourselves. I either solved it in class or I gave you as an assignment, one of those two. So the first requirement is account analysis methods. So we are told to do the account analysis methods. Accounts analysis methods, accounts analysis methods. Uh -huh. We have the cost item here, the cost item, then we will be able to say which one is fixed and which one is variable. 
bit. Oh, we solved in class. That is what June is saying. So if we solved in class, do we proceed to the next question? Okay, the nose have it, there are many. Okay. Let's just remind those who are not there. On uh, the nose are many. The nose. Okay. But quickly, uh, let's move his feet. Uh, so, indirect materials. Indirect materials. Under normal circumstances, indirect materials are supposed to be fixed. But the examiner here has suggested that they are variable. So you go with the examiner. So your amount, where can you find that 7,500? I have indirect labor. Indirect labor. Indirect labor. We are told 171,000 is uh, fixed. So utachukua 194,200 minus 171,000 and get 23,200. Rent, rent, that one is uh, fixed. So we get to that six thousand four hundred and twenty. To that six thousand four hundred and twenty. Twenty kwa huyu wa asima electricity. Now electricity, we are told it is variable twenty seven thousand two hundred and ten. Twenty seven thousand two hundred and ten. Then we go to maintenance, maintenance. So maintenance, uh, we are told, oh, numeruka depreciation, akini misawa, So maintenance, 8,500 is fixed. So nitachukua 24,330 minus 8,500 is 15,830. Then I go to depreciation and in Meruka. Depreciation is supposed to be a fixed cost. And that is what the examiner says, 181,000. Then I go to property taxes. Now the typing there was not done so well. So they are not really matching well. The amount for property taxes is 14,100. So the fixed is 6,350. So chukua 14,100 minus 6,350. You get 7,750. Uh, we are beginning with data processing. Data, the amount that is fixed is 94.70. The total amount for data is here 11. So 11 to 20 minus 94.70, you get 17.50. And then we have support. Support is a fixed amount of 
So I hope you have been able to follow uh, those typings. Uh, so the total here. So total, if I add plus 77, 50, plus 15, 8, 30, plus 27, 210, plus 23, 200, plus 37, 500, I get 113, 240. Then 171,000 plus 236, 420. Plus eight five hundred, plus one eight one thousand, plus sixty three fifty, plus ninety four seventy, plus sixteen nine forty. I'm getting six twenty nine six eighty. Yeah, good. Thank you, June. I see we are in agreement. Now from there, uh, B is supposed to be. One one three two forty. You divide by eight hundred. You divide by eight hundred. So one one three two forty divided by eight hundred. It is one forty one point five five. And the value of A is six twenty nine six eight. So you read your function. The function now will be y is equal to 629680 plus 141.55x. So are we okay? Good, let us now go to the next method, which is called Hiro method. Hiro method. Hiro method. Hiro method. Now, in the Hiro method, <laughs> my camera is doing it upside down. So, so, okay. We know the formula is y is equal to a plus bx. y is equal to a plus bx. So, you will go, you will go to the values in information. Uh, Information number three. And the highest number of units are 98. I hope you can see that. The highest number of units in 98, whose cost is 777, 640, being equal to A plus 98,000 B. And I'm saying this is the highest. That is the value for the highest. The smallest, the smallest value is 56,900, whose cost is 717,670, being equal to A plus uh, 56, 900 B, this is for the lowest. That is for the lowest. And one thing you should remember is 
we always select in the units, but not in the cost. So the cost need not be the highest of the lowest. But as long as they are the units, they are the cost of those units, you proceed. So to go a calculator, we create we subtract. We create we subtract. Yeah, it has seventy seven six forty minus seventeen six seventy is fifty nine nine seventy being equal to ninety eight thousand minus fifty six nine hundred is forty one thousand one hundred B and from there we create uh, inverse of that times fifty nine nine seventy. I'm able to get 1.459, 1.459. Then I say 77640 is equals to A plus 98,000 times 1.459. So based on that, I'll be able to say 77640 minus 98,000 times 1.459. I get 634,658. So thus, y is equal to 634,658. Plus 1.459x. When x is 800,000 units, y, y should be 634, 658 plus 1.459 times 800. Remember the equation is in thousands. Remember the equation is in thousands. And I'm getting 635.825.2. Marisa Hapo, you appear finished so that I proceed to the next one. Okay. Yeah, the units are in thousands, Churchill. That's how it should be. Yes. So I can see we are finished. Uh, Good. So the next method that they are asking us to work on 
is simple depression. The asking of simple regression, simple linear regression, simple linear regression methods. Now, in the simple linear regression methods, uh, The results are already given. If you look at information five, if you look at information five, we are already told y is equal to 626, 547 plus 1.504x. So when you are told to predict why predicted then should be 626, 547 plus 1.504 times 800. Someone send me the answer quickly. Uh, 627, 750, 627, 750.2. That one was as simple as that. You just use the results. But come on, then you develop a normal regression equation. The normal regression equation, which we know so well how to go about. Uh, so now we have to go to the next to go about. Finally, they are asking about multiple regression. Multiple regression equation or method. Multiple regression method or equation. So, as I hear, already we are given the results. Already we are given the results. If you keep your information six. When you go to information six, you find six at two six forty plus one point five zero one x minus fifty nine point zero six seven. Now this one I'll call it x two, and this one I call it x one. X one to present units, and this one to present the index. Present the index. So the Y predicted should be 6.2640 plus 1.501 times 800. Those are the units we are using. Minus 59.067 times Ukiangaria information uh, 2. Information two, we are told the index should be 113. We are told the index should be 113. So send me the answer. Six twenty-seven one sixty-six. Six twenty-seven one six six point two three. As according to Amanda, some more results. I need some more results to compare. Okay, June confirms as good. Uh, a chain, chain, good. And then finally, now this one, which one is the most appropriate method? The most appropriate in a quarter is multiple regression. Reason being, it uses more than one variable. 
it uses more than one variables, so it is the most accurate or the most appropriate. So that was that was a recap of the methods that we use in forecasting. So make sure you are also good there. Now, before I start running away, I can see I have 11 minutes, which I can attempt the next question. So, the next question. A manufacturer produces and sells two products, A and B. The unit variable cost is shillings 12 and shillings 8 for A and B, respectively. A review of selling prices is in progress and it has been estimated that for each product, an increase, that should be an increase in the selling price would result in a fall in demand of shillings 500 units per every shillings one increase in price. And similarly, a decrease of shillings one in price would result in an increase in demand of 500 units. The current sales prices and sales demand are, we are given that. So calculate the profit maximizing price for each product. The question of July 2000, question 3B. July 2000, question 3B. Now this one, I wanted to remind you what we call microeconomic pricing method. That is what I wanted you to remember. Microeconomic pricing methods. And when you are in a microeconomic pricing method, the key thing is what we call the demand function. Demand function is the one that shows us the relationship between units and prices. Units and prices. And this one is given as P is equals to A minus B Q. That is how it is stated. It shows an inverse relationship. So let's begin with product A. Product A. So when we got product A, you can see we are told the selling price is 30. So substituting in this function, we will say 30 is equals to A minus Q. Q is 15,000 units. So 15,000 B. Then we are told if you change the price by one shilling, so equal 29. Demand will change by 500. So because the relationship is inverse, then the units will increase. The units will increase. And therefore, when you subtract, when you subtract here, upper unapata one equals 500 B. So quickly send me the answer for B. Quickly send me the answer for B. The interest of time, I go with the first person there now. The value for B. Yeah, 0 0.002, good. 0 0.002. So then we say 30 is equal to A minus 15,000 times 0 0.002. So again, quickly send me the value for A. 
the value for A. Value for A is not one, it is not thirty, but it is sixty. <laughs> it is sixty. He could have put a plus, a plus. Those who are giving zero, those who are giving one, it is sixty. He could have put a plus. So B is 60 minus 0 0.002 Q. Q is out of the revenue. The same is 60 minus 0 0.002 Q. You multiply by Q. If they asked you to get the revenue, that is how you go about it. So that you tell them revenue is 60Q minus 0.002Q squared. That way. Hey, Lynette, I'm surprised that you are not able to see the board. Uh, not unless you tell me that part hapo is there. Is that what you're saying, Rinet? Okay. Maybe here to incorporate, but my figures are my figures are clear. Rinet, are you able to see now? Good. Roda. Ah, yeah. Sasa, marginal revenue. You need to imagine revenue is 60 minus 0 0.004 Q. 0.004Q. Ah, yeah. That is marginal revenue. Now, if we are looking for maximum profit, for maximum profit, marginal revenue is supposed to be equal to zero. That is uh, 60 minus 0.004Q is zero. Tell me what should be Q. If we are looking for my, uh, maximum, sorry, not maximum profit. Sorry, sorry. That is maximum revenue. Jafika kwa profit or kwa revenue. Uh -huh, 15,000. Good. 15,000 units. So price at this point will then be 60 minus 0 0.002 times 15,000. This goes back to sharing 30. And revenue, revenue then will be 15,000 times 30. And this will be shared for fifty thousand. For fifty thousand. And uh, the next thing that I wanted to remind you is if you are looking for maximum profit. For maximum profit, we normally say a marginal revenue should be equal to marginal cost, which is the same thing as variable cost. The same thing as variable cost. That is 60 minus 0.004Q should be equal to 12. The variable cost of A is 12. So now tell me what Q should be from there. Variable cost is also the marginal cost. So tell me Q should be how many units if you want to maximize profits. You're looking to maximize profits. Uh, 
Yeah, good. 12,000. 12,000 units. So P at this point is 60 minus 0 0.002 times 12,000. So what should be the price for us to maximize profits? That is six. So now from there, I would want you to do on your own the same thing for products. The same thing for product B. You do the same thing for product B. Uh, so, so with that, we can call it a lesson. Is that so? Yeah, good. Thank you, thank you. So that I can start now running away. You can see there is a little bit traffic, traffic here. I hope it's a lot of fun. Uh, that will be good. So we continue preparing for the exams expected to be there next week. Although there is still a big crowd of doubts, but we are still optimistic. Uh, there is still a big crowd of doubts from the information I've gathered today. But for now, we, we continue preparing. Uh, but ready for any eventuality. Ready for any eventuality, but we continue preparing. Thank you so much. Have a good night. In the case of any development, we shall keep on relaying information as soon as we get it. But let us uh, prepare for the exams and also know that what you cannot change, it should not give you stress. What you cannot control. So what you can only control is to prepare for the exams. Thank you so much.